So has NVIDIA finally fixed the RTX 3080 crashing problem? If you guys have seen this, it's been pretty much everywhere. Everybody's been talking about as soon as these GPUs go over 2 gigahertz, they've been crashing to the desktop depending on the game that you're playing. NVIDIA recently released a driver that specifically addressed this issue. So let's talk about it. And I'm also going to do some testing on my own 3080. Let's get started. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Thank you once again to all my recent subscribers. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell. A lot of great content coming up. All right, so let's get right into it. Recently, the RTX 3080, aside from all the launch fiasco that we've been having, it also was crashing to the desktop. Now, that's kind of funny because a lot of people were laughing at the AMD 5700 XT drivers, which were giving all sorts of problems back then. But I guess here we are and NVIDIA drivers are usually fairly well optimized the cards are for the most part some of the most stable on the market so it was definitely surprising that at launch we were having these issues reported by different people this is heaven benchmark and if you were wondering why it's not running it's frozen look at that it's crashing that's an RTX 3080. And one important point before we even discuss these issues and fixes, um, everybody has to realize that these components and power delivery in general and the way these um, GPUs are made, it's definitely a very complicated and technical process. So that means that there are a variety of things that can happen. In fact, this is something that Nvidia even said. Um, it doesn't necessarily come down just to the quality of the capacitors. I know people were talking about MLCC and POSCAPs like those words were being thrown around. I think most people never heard of them before. POSCAP sounds like something you would get at the dentist or something like that. So having said that, it's a very technical subject and I think it may be hard to narrow it down to just one thing. And then the second thing that even adds more complexity will be driver software. Um, a lot of driver software can be optimized in the way that the GPU reacts to certain things. It's actually a very complicated process. So having said that, let's just talk about the basics and what's actually going on. So certain people People had that issue with the GPU crashing. Um, in fact, I tested it on two different 3080s. The first one was the Founders Edition 3080 and then a PNY Accelerate 3080. And of course, at stock settings, I didn't have any issues with either GPU. Um, in fact, they didn't even boost over two gigahertz, which would explain why there are no issues. Apparently, most of these crashing issues were occurring over two gigahertz. So safe to say, if they're under, you're not really gonna have that issue. So the only thing we can really do to test if it's better or not is maybe to give the GPU a slight overclock just to push it over two gigahertz. And that's exactly what I did. So I used MSI Afterburner, um, which Let's you bump it up you can bump it up by only like 50 megahertz or even 100 megahertz previously stock the pny gpu was boosting anywhere from 1905 occasionally it would hit like 1965 megahertz or something like that but never went over two gigahertz and i ran the heaven benchmark i played some games while running the heaven benchmark i did see it jump well over uh, 2000 megahertz a couple of times but i'll report that even on this third party gpu i didn't have any problems at all with any crashes after nvidia's driver update now before anytime i would do the same thing just bump up the speed in msi afterburner for this third party card um, i would get crashes in like heaven benchmark it really wouldn't work that well and at that point you don't know if it's tied to this particular issue or maybe the card is just doesn't overclock that high but after the driver update i definitely saw the card boosting over two gigahertz and i certainly didn't have any type of glitches or any type of driver issues at all um, and not to mention of course the founders edition which Initially, there weren't really many reports of these having issues, and I haven't had an issue with that one as well. So at least in my case, it looked like whatever NVIDIA did in the drivers, it definitely helped to keep the card more stable. I don't really plan to overclock these very far at all. I'm mostly going to leave them stock anyway, just because the performance is already exceptional for what I plan to do with them. And I think for the most part, I don't think there's a huge amount of overclocking room in these GPUs. Having said that, it's always nice to know that there is more headroom and that whatever you paid for your GPU, if it's 
says it may be able to reach a certain speed overclocked it's nice to know that it can do that so whatever nvidia did to optimize the drivers for these gpus at least helped in my case now as we mentioned before this is a very sort of wide ranging issue so it's possible that certain gpus may react differently to these drivers they may not be fixed we don't really know yet nvidia really just released these drivers very very recently so we'll have to wait and see what reports roll in but for the most part at least my gpu seems to be okay and nvidia said it doesn't really necessarily come down to the quality of these capacitors it was something sort of in the drivers in the software and we will definitely see if this holds to be true with testing more numbers coming out as more people get their hands on the 3080. It's been a limited launch because they sold out so quickly, but I think as time goes on, more and more people will get their hands on the 3080. And then if there are any issues like this, they'll sort of come out. Um, I guess the positive thing here is Nvidia did respond fairly quickly. I know for the first day or two, as they were figuring stuff out, trying to identify the issue, of course, you're not gonna get too much communication just because they need time to assess the situation. Some of the third party um, partner card manufacturers like EVGA, Gigabyte, they all put out statements saying that they make everything in specification with NVIDIA. Um, it doesn't come down necessarily to the quality of the capacitors. So they've made various statements. I I know MSI has even changed some of these capacitors to the stronger ones on some of the GPUs that they're now making. So there's definitely a variety of things going on here, but it's good Nvidia acknowledged this issue when they put out this driver update. At least it seems to cure a lot of the issues. We'll see if it's the long-term fix or if there's anything else under the hood. But for now, at least this seems to be like a pretty good potential fix for this issue. With this GPU, I'm gonna play a variety of games and benchmarks. We'll see if it's stable with a very mild overclock just to bring it over that two thousand megahertz limit that way we can see a little bit better if in different games and different applications it's really holding to be stable so far from my testing it seems like it's improved i haven't had any issues but i'm definitely going to be using it a little bit more just to see if i find anything else all right guys thank you very much for watching remember to subscribe hit that notification bell leave a comment below and i'll see you guys on the next video